Hi, I'm Tor Miller, and you're watching AMB. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from AMB, and I'd like to welcome you to our interview with Tor Miller. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, welcome back to Toronto. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Ryan Shepard loves that one. <laughs> I know that you were just walking around Toronto kind of exploring. Did you find anything cool? Uh, we went to the uh, Royal Ontario Museum, if that's the name of it. Yep, yeah, they're wrong. Which I thought uh, was the National History Museum, which <laughs> I was uh, sadly mistaken. We kept asking people that on the street and getting nothing. So, uh, But it was cool. Uh, I woke up super early this morning to do some morning uh, television, and so I spent most of the day napping. Yeah. For your alert now. Yeah, I'm good. Ready I'm good to go. to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks for any time for you, because come May, you're finally releasing a debut record. I know it was recorded in London. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, uh, I'm very excited. I've been sitting on these songs for a really long time. And, um, yeah, we recorded it in London. It was two producers and I, John Green and uh, Elliot James. And we kind of kept it really close to the chest. It was like a six-week um, process. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was incredible. I'm really proud of the record. It's a step up from the EP in terms of the arrangements are much grander. There's strings and horns, and it kind of uh, is uh, just a more full and uh, accurate approach of what I was, I was looking to make with the EP, just because the, the means I had. So. Well, I've always wanted to go to London, but I've yet to have the chance. Do you think the vibe of the city impacted you at all? Yeah, definitely. I think not only the vibe of, of London itself, but being... Uh, far removed from New York made a big difference and so I was constantly thinking back on the city and, and the differences between the two and uh, that aided a lot in the process. Are you still kind of thinking back to American English as a title? Yeah, no that will be the title. Okay. There it is. I, I kind of, I love that one and, and so I don't want to go against it. Yeah. Yeah. Well until the record's released you've actually held fans over with a really groovy single, Carter and Cash. Uh, why did you decide to go with that infamous couple rather than any other? Well, I mean, I was in a really serious relationship, uh, which lasted a couple of years, and, and she was with me uh, before everything started happening in my career. You know, I had just signed, but not much was going on, and uh, oh, I signed shortly after we started dating, and then subsequently started traveling a lot, and so I kept this journal, and then we would trade it back and forth between each other, and uh, she would always sign off with, uh, uh, like, Carter and Cash. So while I was in L.A. on a trip, uh, yeah, I just kind of... Just stuck. Yeah, it did. There's this one line that I absolutely love from the song, which is, I walked this line right next to you. I'm a lyrics person, so is that totally intentional, like a little nod to Johnny Yeah, Nash? and then uh, later on in that verse, it's like, I'll walk this line right next to you with every step, the closer that we get. Um, and then we're talking about burn the whole town down, which is like, obviously, people say that. But uh, I was like, in reference to that song, Jackson, that they sang together. Yeah. <laughs> we got married in a fever, hotter than a pepper sprout or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're from New York City, one of the greatest cities, I think it's easy to say, in the world. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, if we were to come with you for a day in New York City, where would you take us? What are, you, where are your go-to spots? Yeah, I, I walk around the Lower East Side quite a bit. Uh, I always get a burger at Black Market on 7th and A, hanging around Washington Square Park a lot. I go, I, there's a Cologne on Lafayette and 4th Street. I always get my coffee. Um, so, but it's a lot of walking and just looking around and going into record stores and, and whatnot and, and seeing the city. You a big vinyl lover? I have been. Re in the last couple of I bought a, a record player three years ago or something, and so I've started to collect uh, a modest uh, assortment of records. Yeah, because I know you grew up on a lot of your parents' music, especially yeah. your mom's. So I don't know if she maybe handed down records to you. Yeah, we definitely have some vinyl. She's, she's passed along some really nice ones. Uh, there's a Billie Holiday Lady Sings the Blues record, uh, which I listen to a lot. There's a um, Aretha Franklin Gold record, which is just all her greatest hits. Um, London Calling, The Clash. Can't uh, go wrong with that. Yeah, no, it, which is an <laughs> incredible record, and we ha always have it on when we're playing pool and whatever, all our friends. That's our, like, pool record. Yeah. Well, now that you've started this new North American tour, this is your second U.S. tour ever. So uh, yeah, how's yeah. it going so far? It's great. We're in the first week. It's exciting. It's a lot more fun to have a band. The, the first time around, I was just on my own, which was cool, and you get into a lot of interesting situations, but uh, it's definitely nice to have that camaraderie and, and whatnot and, and be able to share everything that you're doing with someone. You find it easier having people to kind of share those moments with? Yeah, and I was kind of initially worried that because uh, I had gotten so accustomed to doing my thing and being on my own that uh, I don't know that it was going to interfere with that, but it's been really nice. I know you're a big Bowie fan. Yeah. And we're all really sad to see him go, but I was really surprised that I hadn't seen any covers from you. Yeah, um, 
I kind of idolize them so much that I don't even really want to. Really? Yeah, in a way. Like, I always found with covers, when I was, because I did so many as a kid, there's just like it, the songs lose a little bit of that magic once you've figured them out and you've played them and you know how they were constructed and everything. Um, so I kind of like to leave him be, and he's just someone I love to listen to and I'm a huge fan of. Do you have a favorite Bowie track? No, kind of like all of Ziggy Stardust, like ba- front to back. I just love that record. Yeah. There's so many. I, it's kind of hard to choose. It's yeah, it's, imp- it's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> I came across a recent Spotify playlist of yours. So there's things like Courtney Barnett, Borns, and the Maccabees, who I just adore. Mm -hmm. Who's your go-to band right now that's a little newer? Well, I've been listening to this Wolfbeck record. Okay. Yeah, which is like they're kind of this jammy band, and they always have a bunch of guest singers, and they put this record out in October called A Thrill of the Arts. Um, And it's just there's some great songs on there. It's like they just don't take themselves too seriously. Like the subject matter isn't anything um, too deep, but that's what I kind of love about it. Nice. Yeah. And for yourself, outside of music, what do you like to do? Um, God, well, cause <laughs> it, it's such a tough question, really, because my the last like two years of my life have been exclusively music. Um, but it's stuff that I love to read. It's like really boring stuff. Like mm-hmm. I love to read a lot of walking. I will like walk a couple miles every day just around. And um, yeah, I don't know. Movies. Just boring. You're hanging out with friends. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find Museums. the literature seeks in to some of your? Yeah, I need it. It's like yeah. a, either I'll I'll spend a lot of my time reading and not writing, and then I spend time writing and not reading. So they they impact each other. For this tour so far, have you had any unique fan encounters that you could share with our viewers? Um, none as of yet, just because we've been uh, a few days in. We're a few days in, but then also we're, we've been trying to uh, outrace this storm. Yes. On the East Coast. You're posting some serious photographs of that. Yeah, and uh, it really got us, and so we got stuck in it. So every venue, we've just kind of been leaving right away. So I think Toronto tonight is going to be the night where something weird <laughs> is about to go down because we're, we're, we're planted. I love how when you come to Toronto, you're in Canada, and there's actually barely any snow to be seen. I know. It's crazy. Well, that's what happened because we got stuck. We were leaving Philly, which was like the center of the storm, and uh, we were trying to get to Boston. We had to postpone the Boston show. And um, we knew that there was going to be some point, like in upstate New York, maybe Connecticut area, where it was just going to stop. And But we just we couldn't make it. It just got to be too much. Let's wrap things up today. Anything you want to say to those fans who are going to be viewing the interview? Um, I love you. Stay classy. <laughs> Perfect parting words. Thank yeah. you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. My pleasure. And remember, everyone viewing, can visit us at amusicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite artists. We'll see you next time.